So what I've been working on for the last couple of days, um, it's hard to make out here in the light. I can see it well, but through the camera, it doesn't really want to show. But this is the design that I came up with for the stitch pattern on my seats. Um, this little swoopy kind of design. And I took this swoop from a, a particular zip. I really liked how it looked, as well as the pleats. These are, they'll be two inch wide sewn pleats um, from this swoop down. And you can see where it stops from here uh, this point down there'll be nothing down here and if I do this right the bottom of the seat will slip under the foam of the top of the seat now the bottom man it is super hard to see let me get close you can just barely see the pencil line same thing I've laid out two inch uh, two inch pleated pattern the entire bottom will be that two inch pleated pattern um, and here's a look at the back seat and now you can see the the layout on the the base here better the two inch pleats but it's the same swoop um, the dimensions are a little bit different because this seat isn't as uh, tall as the front seat but basically I've drawn everything out uh, laid it out how I, I liked it I like the look of it um, I took all four of my I guess they're called ceilings I, I call them kick panels or door panels just because I'm used to cars so um, that quarter inch ply that I had laid out the two inch pleated designs on all four spots two in the rear two in the front uh, I took those today and dropped them off at the upholsterer um, paid for those again they're going to be done in white marine vinyl they'll be stitched with uh, white stitching just a two inch pleated pattern just like this here so you know that'll cover up that section there and then from this frame forward and the same on my side uh, they're at the upholstery shop, uh, should be done here in a few days, so we'll get a look at those. Uh, ordered some more Glen L Poxy Shield, so I can, as soon as that comes in, I can coat these seats front, back, all the way around, and then drop the seats off at the upholstery shop. Um, I've already had the upholstery shop order all the foam for it. Again, it's two inch high density foam white and we're talking bright bright white marine vinyl um, so all of the material for the front and rear seats uh, has been ordered and paid for so again as soon as i get the epoxy i'll get these coated get them taken down and dropped off to the upholsterer pick up my door panels or ceilings and we'll get to take a look at those and um you know because i ordered the gallon of epoxy shield i can then start pulling out all of my floor planks uh, we'll take the box out, the seat bases out, pull all of the floor planks, encapsulate all of those. And, uh, you know, a couple coats on that. A coat, sand it, coat it again. And then i got to decide what I'm going to clear coat. The floor planks, the armrest, the exposed little sections of frame. Again, the, uh, the dash, the carlings. What I'm going to clear coat all this in. Pick up a gallon of that and start clear coating the inside of the boat. Once that's done... Then we'll be moving on to putting the, the sub deck on and then the veneer uh, deck planking. So we're making good progress. Um, just knocking it down little by little. But the, uh, the seats, that was a, I had assumed was going to be a fairly expensive part left to do on the boat. Um, aside from the outboard, which I haven't really even thought about yet. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we are. We've got uh, half of the upholstery down at the upholstery shop, and we'll have the other half down there here in another week, week and a half, making good progress. So, in my very first zip video, I talked about keeping um, envelopes with the receipts and a running total of, of each portion of the boat. I kind of broke it down into, I don't know, five, six sections. And I wanted to be very, very detailed in documenting how much I've spent in total and also in sections of the boat. Well, this, this started to add up really quick and I ran out of room on my envelopes, so I, I moved them into gallon Ziploc bags. You can see these things are just packed with receipts, every receipt for everything I've ever bought for the boat. And I keep a running total, for instance, $2,565.46 in materials. So that's materials. Uh, here's tools and consumables, sandpapers, things like that. Uh, this one is electrical. 
Uh, what's our running total? And I just up, updated this today, so our running total is 1500 bucks and change. Anyhow, hardware, thing total of everything. And about every four or five months, I, I have a big old stack of receipts. I'll go through and I'll separate them based on the category, and then I'll line item, add them all into my running totals and update it. So I did that today. Um, I got to the end uh, of all my totals and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to add all these up to see how close they are to my actual running total up here. And for some reason, you know, 63.55 and we're actually uh, 67.20, you know, roughly $400 difference. And I was starting to go, well, crap, I'm doing my best to, to be incredibly accurate with all of this. And I'm $400 off in my receipts from what I've bought. I know this is 100% accurate. At the end of every month, I have all of my receipts in a specific area. I add them all together. We get our monthly totals, and I add that total onto the total invested. So I know this is accurate, 100%. But I was going crazy trying to figure out why I couldn't show this $400 I didn't have receipts for. I'm going, what in the hell? I ended up tearing my bench apart and I found a stack of receipts hidden under all of this crap. And after adding those into it, I'm, you know, roughly I, I'm about $80 shy of this total. So that's better. I can live with being around 100 bucks, you know, 100 bucks or less of what my total investment is shown in receipts. Again, I want to have a receipt for every single screw, nut, bolt, piece of wood, scrap of stainless. I want to be as accurate as I possibly can, and I want to have the receipts to show it. So after finding that secret stack of receipts hidden down there, we're now, you know, about 80 bucks difference in what I can show receipts for and what I know the total is. So that's livable. I can live with that. But uh, anyhow, that's what I did today, or part of what I did today adding up receipts well the uh, gallon of Glen L poxy shield showed up today um, so got to coating these seats here's the rear seat back front seat back and then the two bottoms which are identical so they are coated on all sides with epoxy you can semi see the gloss on it um, very very wet still with any luck this will be cured up tomorrow I can sand them all with 80 grit and uh, do one more final coat and let that cure and then off to the upholstery shop the seats go so i'm getting pretty excited making good progress so i now have two coats of epoxy on all of my seat parts uh here are the front and uh sorry rear and front seat seat backs you can see the gloss on them um the bottoms are not hanging up they're outside and we'll go over i couldn't come up with any better way to show or explain a mean blush than this example that I came across. Um, I'm epoxying in, in relatively cold weather. You know, we're dipping down into the low 40s at night. So I'm trying to get my epoxy on early in the day, run my little heater as long as I can to keep the shop warm, to give these things like an initial cure before it gets cold. But ultimately it gets cold. And you can see how shiny this is. This feels like oil. It's like a, an oil, uh, really, really, really slick. So I'm rubbing my glove on it here. And I don't know, you can't really see it. it there you can see a little bit of it. But it, it feels like oil, like WD-40, like the whole thing is coated in WD-40. Um, you can see how shiny it is up here, but that's a mean blush. That is a mean blush. Um, sometimes it's thin like this and feels like oil. Sometimes it's thicker and feels like wax. But, you know, ultimately this stuff has to be removed. Um, you can see up here it looks super glossy. See when I rub it, the gloss goes away. Let's look over here. Super glossy. See my finger fingerprints in it? See that? It's like an, like an oil. And that has to come off. Um, nothing will adhere to this. Paint won't adhere to it. Um, a, another coat of epoxy won't adhere to it. Um, not that we're going to do anything else to these other than they're going to go out to the upholstery shop. Again, super glossy, but if I wipe it with my finger, you see that? It takes the gloss off, and they're just super oily. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking them down, taking them outside. Wow, it's bright out here. And here's two that I have washed down. They are not near as glossy. 
but they're not oily anymore. The, the uh, epoxy is completely hard. So there's the two seat bottoms. And what I'm using here is just some Dawn dish soap with a sponge. I'll bring them out here, set them on top of my recycle bin, scrub the crap out of them, rinse them down with the hose, flip them over, do the same thing, rinse it down, wash the edge around, rinse it down, and come over here and dry it off with a towel and lean them up against the shop, done. That's how you re remove a mean blush. Um, you don't have to scrub like a SOB to get it off there. You just, you know, just like you're washing dishes and it comes right off, especially with a, you know, a degreasing soap uh, and Dawn dish soap works the best. Anyhow, so that's a mean blush and how I deal with it. If you use epoxy, you will, you will experience a mean blush. All right, it's officially March 1st, 2017. For the month of February 2017, we went up nine whole hours. Um, not a whole lot, but there was a specific reason I tried my hardest to put in nine hours. Uh, this month, we went up $839.91. Um, and that's on interior. Uh, the vast majority of it, $650 for the interior. Uh, the remaining was in another gallon of Glenel Poxy Shield, another quart kit of Glenel Poxy Grip. Uh, I picked up the stainless bow eye from Glenel again, so the large majority of that, you know, 650 of it was from the interior, the upholstery shop. Um, the remainder was supplies from Glenel. So uh, that nine and a half, or I'm sorry, nine hours even, the specific reason I did that was because that puts us at 600 hours even into the zip. So there we are. We just crested another milestone, 600 hours. And the $839.91 brings us up to $7,560.11 invested in the zip. So let's see where we're at. So I took a few minutes to uh, go ahead and wash all the dust off of all of this stuff so it's really pretty and presentable because we now have our white marine vinyl two inch sewn pleat kick panels or door panels or I guess they're called ceilings. Uh, we got those back from the upholstery shop. So again they're just like my pattern, they're two inch wide sewn pleats, um, some pretty thin foam or batting, I think it's quarter inch behind them just to give them a little texture. But there's a look at the front cockpit, port side. Here's the rear cockpit, port side. You can see how I've extended them just past the seat, like I talked about, a couple inches. The seat will come up through here, and then with that two-inch foam, should uh, should hide this gap and everything look really good. I just ran them a hair bit beyond, farther than I needed to, but uh, there's no harm in going a, a few extra inches past. Um, so here is this side as well. I'll try to get up good and close here so you can get a very good look at the seams. They're just beautiful. The guy does fantastic work. Really, really nice. Um, it's a great fit. Looks great everywhere. So we'll come around the other side of the boat. And I was really, really hoping that I was going to have my seats in time to do this final little bit of the video but they're not ready yet. I'm still a couple days away. So as you can see, there's that side. Now my steer cable normally would be up on top of this speaker. Um, I actually pulled the speaker out, dropped the cable down so I could pull it back out of the motor well hole so I could do another coat of epoxy in here. Um, so normally you wouldn't see this. You just do right now. But anyhow, there's the starboard rear and the starboard front. Is that not awesome looking? So anyhow, um, these will eventually be attached with two inch, I call it hook and loop, everybody else calls it Velcro. But I'll run, uh, I'll either run like three vertical strips of Velcro or I'll run two long horizontal strips of Velcro and that'll slip in place and then Velcro. As you can see, probably here, you can see that this and this don't match up. This front piece is actually hanging out about an inch or so. I might be able to illustrate that. Looking down from the top, there you go. You see how this one's all the way tucked in against the hull and this one's poking out? Well, if I reach in here, I don't know if you can see it, reach in and, and push it back to where it should be. There, 
that's how it should look. So anyhow, because these have, you know, the side of the boat has a bit of a twist to it, you have to conform these panels to fit, and the, uh, the hook and loop or the Velcro will do that. So right now, it's not a, a perfect lineup, but it will be when they're officially installed, when I get the, the Velcro installed on them. But super, super pretty. Looks awesome. The, uh, the upholstery shop just did a fantastic job, and if the seats turn out anything like the, uh, like the kick panels did, it's going to be really pretty in here. So, uh, again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, and comment, and we'll catch you on the next update of Building the Zip.